Lesson 20. The Critical Elements to Mastering Your Trading Plan Welcome to Lesson 20. My name is Sam Eder. I'm a global macro currency trader and the owner of fxrenew.com. This is the Advanced Forex course for smart traders. Bill Lipschitz, Market Wizard said, Many people think that trading can be reduced to a few rules. Always do this or always do that. To me trading isn't about always at all. It's about each situation. Without a written plan, emotions almost completely dominate your decisions and experiences when you trade. For instance, when you run into trouble or come across a less obvious decision point, you can be hijacked by fear or greed. You become irrational and make mistakes. The human limbic system is the gatekeeper for all higher thought processing and evaluation. Your emotions overshadow and prevent logical thought processes. Conversely, when you think rationally and trade your plan, you are in the zone. You're freeing yourself from the constraints of your emotions. You're more open, agreeable and compliant. All in all, you're much more likely to make better decisions. If you have ever traded without a plan and started to use one, you will know the difference. It's like chalk and cheese. Your plan becomes the foundation for consistent and rational action taking instead of reckless, emotion driven mistake making. But not any old plan will do. It needs to be unique and special to you. It needs to be your plan, one you own deep down. The quest is not finding the one approach that unlocks the secrets to market success but rather finding an approach that fits your personality. You cannot succeed in the markets by copying someone else's approach because the odds are remote that their method will fit your personality. You have to know yourself and not try to be somebody you're not. If you are a day trader, then day trade. If you are a long term trader, then be a long term trader. If you're a technician, be one. If you're a macro trader, be exactly that. Don't get distracted by the number of ideas and strategies that you see opportunities in. Be cutthroat and pick the ones that suit you. Sometimes this means you have to let go of a promising idea. Remember, good can be the enemy of great. Don't let it stress you. Note down your good idea and you can revisit it later if you need to. It's about figuring out what you are the very best at and doing more of those types of trades. If you want to be as successful as possible in the markets, it stands to reason that you need to zero in on your winning attributes and exploit them mercilessly. It's the same in business, art and even sport. The best of the best know exactly what they're good at and how to use it to full effect. Focus on the strategies, trading vehicles and time horizons that suit your long term goals, model of the market and importantly your day to day schedule. The seduction of day trading. Day trading is like the Vegas of trading. Lots of bright lights and seduction, which only a few seasoned pros can resist well enough to make significant amounts of consistent money from the edge. Now my goal here is not to dissuade you from being a day trader. If you are confident and sure about you want to do, you are not going to be persuaded by me one way or the other. What I do want to do is stop you from getting stuck down the wrong trading rabbit hole. Day trading requires enormous amounts of time, preparation and commitment. This is always going to be beyond the practical reach of many of us. It is a romanticism created by brokers that you can come home in the evening and sit in front of the computer screen trade and then pop off to bed with a few grand's profit. Yes, some people can do it and many other full-time traders do exist. But these traders are like the professional poker players in Vegas. They are not there on holiday from their full-time job. It's what they do day in and day out. Instead it may be best to master the slower time frames first. Your edge as a retail trader is much greater in swing trading or position trading. Your costs both in terms of spread and time are considerably less and the slower speeds cuts down the impact of any mistakes on your performance. Don't think that you need to day trade to make big returns. Less can be more. 
Carefully consider what you want out of the market, why you have chosen the method you have and whether it is realistic for you. Market wizard Marty Swartz said, I'm extremely well diversified. My thought process is if I screw up in one place, I'll always have a life preserver someplace else. Have a side income. Much of trading effectively is about stress management. A highly stressed trader makes mistakes and has trouble trading their plan. Diverse sources of income allow you to manage your stress levels and to commit more capital to your trading. A wise trader once told me that it does not matter what you do, even if it involves stacking shelves part time. It's just important to make sure you have another source of income if you want to be a trader. Cash flow is king as it helps you manage stress. Manage your own account if you can. There's nothing like doing it. The best way to grow and develop is to live trade. Paper trading, back testing, and trading a demo account all have their uses. But they are very limited since they don't give you the full experience of having skin in the game. Trading is about psychology, and if you neglect this mental component, or much worse, learn bad habits from practice trading, then these methods of trading can only take you so far. This is another bad rabbit hole that you can all too easily get lost in. It's by being brave, taking the hits, and having the courage to trade live that you take those first steps towards mastery. After that, it's down to hard work, self-awareness, and learning from what you have done in order to become a winner. Keep a balanced life. An unhealthy or unbalanced obsession with any activity is not conducive to long-term success. If you recall, Van Thup suggests we are made up of a mess of conflicting parts. Each of your parts has good intentions, but if you don't take steps to satisfy those parts outside of trading, then they will have no other option but to interfere with your trading process. If you don't satisfy your need for excitement outside the markets, then you may try to satisfy it when you are trading, with disastrous consequences. The market is not there for your pleasure. It is therefore important to learn to deal with your personal issues outside the market. In a sense, you can hang them on the metaphorical coat rack when you sit down to trade, and then pick them up again when you finish for the day. You should also schedule vacation time and take breaks during the day. Ed Sakota said, I don't judge success, I celebrate it. I think success has to do with finding and following one's calling regardless of financial gain. Trade in alignment with your purpose. The best traders understand their greater role in the trading ecology. They know why they are trading outside of simply making money and are appreciative of the good that they both create in their own lives and in others through their trading activities. Acknowledgement of your purpose is an important check to the hubris of success. If you let your wins get to you, you start to think you are bigger than the market. A short invitation for a costly comeuppance. Understanding and valuing your purpose keeps your ego in check. On the flip side, being clear about the good you are doing is a critical factor in aligning your subconscious towards wealth. Important tools to have on hand when you trade. When you trade, you want to have some resources ready on hand. These will help you eliminate mistakes and keep your trading psychology in ship sharp shape. These include a trading plan template, having written trading principles, and having a trading checklist. Market wizard Bill O'Neill said anything is possible with persistence and hard work. It can be done and your own determination to succeed is the most important element. You've made it to the end of the advanced Forex course for smart traders, but your journey is only just beginning. Firstly, I want to say thank you for the considerable time and effort you've put into the course. The combined length of the course is that of a good book with detailed exercises at the end of each chapter. Making it to the end is a real achievement to be proud of. I would love to hear any feedback you have regarding the course and how your trading has changed based on what you've learned in the 20 lessons. With your help, I aim to make the course the best it can be. Finally, here are some next steps you can take. Go back to lesson one and rewrite your beliefs about trading. In the first lesson in the course you wrote your beliefs about trading, I would encourage you to revisit the exercise and compare your beliefs about trading 
with your new beliefs about trading now. This will be a good indication of the transformation you have made. If you want to get more signals and insights about the Forex markets, then visit fxrenew.com. You can get a free trial of our signal service, and I publish my best work each week on the FX Renew blog. I suggest you join the FX Renew blog, it's free. If you like what you've read in this course, and you know other traders, why not share it with them too? Once again, thank you for your time and participation.